Hi everyone, let's make some games. In the last video we added a raptor enemy to the scene that runs around and attacks us. In this tutorial we'll look at combat between players and NPCs and how to set up different kinds of weapons. The raptor can attack us but we can't fight back. Let's fix that. The first thing we're going to do is add a health bar so that we can see how much health is being taken away from us. In core content, search for health bar. Drag that into the hierarchy. And let's also add a crossbow. That will be our weapon against the raptor. Let's play and see what happens. We're shooting at the raptor, but it's not dealing any damage. That's because the crossbow isn't set up to fight correctly against NPCs. In the NPC kit, let's look at the dependencies. There's a weapon in here that we can use to test out the combat first, called Destructible Rifle. Drag that in, sit play, and try that against the raptor. There we go, that deals damage correctly. And we can verify in the health bar that we're also taking damage. But for the game I'm making, I want the crossbow to be the weapon here, not the assault rifle. So let's make that happen. The first thing we're going to do is move a script over that comes in the rifle called Destructible Weapon Server. We open up the crossbow from core content. We can see it has this script called Weapon Damage Shoot Server in the server context folder. Delete this script and then take the Destructible Weapon Server script from Destructible Rifle. We're going to duplicate that and move that into the advanced crossbow right here. Now let's give it a try. There we go, immediately combat is already working. Now you did notice we had the fly up numbers saying 10. And that's not really how much damage I want my crossbow to deal. For this game, I wanted to deal 30 damage. Let's try that out. That seems to be working fine. So let's delete the rifle because we don't want that for our game. Now let's try it one more time. We're going to notice a small difference this time. There are no longer fly up numbers, as you can see. The 30 is no longer appearing. That's because there was a client side script in the rifle that was making the numbers appear. Let's hit Ctrl Z to bring the rifle back and examine the client context folder. Here's the script that I was talking about. It's called Destructible Weapon Client. We bring that over to the client context of the crossbow. Drop that in there. Now we can delete the rifle. Organize it a little bit better. We can get rid of the rifle and now we have the script that we wanted right there. Let's hit play. And there we go, we have our damage numbers back. Now we're gonna create a new template from this. Right click create a template from this and say my raptor crossbow and this is what our game will use if you want players to start a game with a weapon in core content there's a object called static player equipment drag that in let's get rid of the crossbow from the scene since we've already created a template from it with the stack player equipment selected, it has this reference right here to the default equipment that it gives to players when the game starts. In this case, it's this top hat. So let's replace the top hat with our Raptor crossbow. And there we go. Now we start the game with the crossbow. At this point, we should test multiplayer to make sure each player is getting a crossbow and that they're all working correctly against the NPC. It's always good practice to test your game in multiplayer at each step of development. Core provides a convenient way to do that. It emulates different players joining the game by launching a separate window for each player. 
When an NPC takes damage, it searches for enemies using its hearing and vision properties. It engages the first target it finds. If that target is eliminated, it then searches nearby to see if there are other enemies. The next thing I want to do is look at the concept of teams. If you select the NPC, there's a team property right here. This is the initial team that they start with. We duplicate the Raptor and change its team to 1. Press F to focus. We move that guy over, rotate him a bit. Now they should fight each other. See? We can see our ally has a blue health bar and our enemy has a red health bar. Why don't we fight and help our Raptor win the fight? And you can see that our allied NPC does not attack us. And our shots also go through him. For more information on these properties on the NPCs, you can mouse over each of the properties and read the tool tips. There's a lot of useful information in here. Let's delete our friendly Raptor. So now that we've explored ranged weapons, the next thing I want to do is take a look at melee weapons. Go to community content and search for Carlos Blade. Double click that and add the Carlos Blade to the scene. When we hit play, we'll start with a crossbow, but we can walk up and pick up Carlos Blade. Let's test that in the fight. Out of the box, it works. Similar to the destructible rifle. Let's compare that to other melee weapons that come in core content. We expect that these won't work. We search for sword. We drag advanced sword in here. That should not deal damage to the NPC. Similar to how we fixed the crossbow, let's take a look at the Carl's blade and see what makes it unique. It has these scripts called Melee Ability Server. They're in a server context folder. These have a reference to the ability. If you right click and say find in hierarchy, it points to the slash one. This one is for slash one, this one is for slash two, and this one is for slash three. I'm gonna hit play again and show the combo sequence on this weapon. You see, these are the different slashes. Those are the three abilities that come in the Carlos Blade. In order to set up the advanced sword from core content, we'll have to add these scripts for these attack, attack abilities right here. Let's expand the server context folder here and take a look at what's inside. We delete this equipment melee attack server script right here. Make a copy of the melee ability server. Duplicate. Move that into the advanced sword. We'll duplicate it one more time. And we'll hook up the two abilities. Attack 1 and attack to. The next thing we need to do is fix this hitbox property. With the sword script selected, if we right click here and say find in hierarchy, it's pointing to the Carlos Blade hitbox because we copied the script from over there to here. So what we want to do is have them point to this hitbox right here. So with control click I can multiple select, drag the hitbox right here to set it. Now it's pointing to this one. Let's hit play and try it. And there it is, it already works. The last type of weapon I'd like to show for this video is ranged weapons with spells. Let's clean up the scene. We've already taken a look at the melee weapons. Let's go to community content and search for leaping sap.
There's the leaping staff, import. Double click. Let's drag the leaping staff into the scene. The leaping staff comes with a series of abilities. We can't see what the abilities are. So let's bring in some UI to show us what the abilities are. Community content. We can search for spell shock. Spell shock weapons. Double click. And drag a copy of spell shock ability canvas into the hierarchy. Immediately we can see the ability icons that will appear. Let's hit play and see. When we pick up the staff, we can see the abilities that are available. R to hit fire rain, shift to leap, right click does a fire blast, and the left click is a fireball. That's really all there is to combat against NPCs. These weapons also work for player versus player. In the next video, we'll look at how to create a new NPC that's different from the ones that come in the kit. To catch this whole series without missing any video, make sure to subscribe. See you next time.